There we go. Oh, you got me. Where were you? I was behind you. Oh, look at you. It's tricky. It's it bad. is. I am. That is what I am. <laughs> <laughs> what did we, how did we get into this? How, I don't understand what happened. How do we end up in this? We're just like fighting each other. Are you in here? I'm in here by myself now. No, you're not. All right. Wait. Where are you? What, what, There's no one else in here. <laughs> it's, it, it tell, it's telling me I'm spectating. Well, well yeah, hit start. It's right, just going to be the two of Auto us. Oh, we're, you're on the opposite team. I guess we'll just kill each other. All right, let's just kill each other. Then. Hey, guys. Welcome to another episode of uh, Games and Guns. I'm Steven Gutowski. I'm here today with, with Ben Howe of Mr. Smith Media and Red State and many other wonderful things. Hi, Ben. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> Good. We can't <laughs> figure out how to... Hey. You're dead, by the way. Dude. Dead. Dude. Dead. <laughs> It's going to be a lot of that, I feel like. <laughs> Somehow we've ended up in a match just against each other. Xbox won't cooperate. So this <laughs> we're just going to be killing each other this entire that's, time. Uh, I think that's great, though. Just one-on-one death match. I think that's awesome. And Ben has never played this game before. And I've never played this game before. And <laughs> so. it took 45 minutes to install a game that I had a disc for. <laughs> Xbox One is wonderful. Uh, I love it. Uh you know, I haven't gotten that sense from you. Yeah, it's it flows out of me. My love for for this system. If you guys want to see the whole my whole uh, love letter to to this beautiful new next gen system, just go watch the last episode of Games and Guns. I actually do like Xbox One. I do. Well, it I won't let us play against other people. So I think it's neato. Your love child is a piece of crap. <laughs> I can't, I can't find you either. It's just, it's just the whole episode is just going to be us running around. That's all right. We'll, 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 we'll... <laughs> I shot a tree, though. Oh, oh, there you are. Oh, there. Okay, yeah. Oh, no, shoot what? There's, only two, there's only two of us, and you're going to be sniping? Oh, okay. I was right behind you. You were shooting the wrong way. There's a lot of terrible segues I can make into the topic I want to talk about, but instead... I'm just going to go ahead and dive right in. Did you hear about the, uh, the shootings in... Um, you see Santa Barbara? Yeah, absolutely. All, yeah, a crazy all, all guy, a psychopath who hated women, um, and pretty much everyone. Yep. Uh, went on a anybody spree. who he perceived to have a better life than him. Yeah, pretty much. It was uh, hated women who didn't, who rejected him. He hated men who well, got the had, women that rejected him. Got women, but also who were like richer than he was and more successful. Uh, he, yeah, he pretty much just hated everybody. He was just kind of a psycho. And what's weird is he sounded like such a, a, a fun guy to hang out with. Yeah. Oh, hey, there you are. Oh, oh sweet. Perhaps, let's see if let's see if I can possibly never kill you in this game. That's probably a really good uh, possibility. <laughs> but uh, as hard as it is to talk about a serious issue like that while playing um, a video game like this. Uh, let's try to do it anyway, I guess. Okay. Yeah, but basically, so this guy went crazy, or he was always crazy, but he finally, like, flew off the handle He's, and... He snapped enough to do something about it. Yeah, I mean, he, he had done, like, crazy things to people he didn't like before. One time he got, like, a super soaker and filled it with orange juice and sprayed a bunch of people because they were, they looked too happy. So the guy was insane. Um, and, and his sadly, parents knew it, and they tried to get... And his parents knew, and they tried to help. The, or they tried to get. The, they talked to the police. They got him uh, therapy. Yep. For some reason, he was still able to buy a, a a gun, several guns, actually. Which is an interesting point, in which my is opinion. Bizarre. Because, you know, whenever these kinds of things happen, um, what the gun opponents do is they they point out where these lack of gun laws created the issue. And then, and and they, you know, whether it's because that person had high capacity magazines, uh, or if it was a state where he it was easier to get a gun. But this is California, where he couldn't have high capacity magazines, and they have strict background checks, and it still failed because uh, the issue, as is always the issue, is that people who want to shoot lots of people to death. Are just going to do that. 
You know, I mean, that's that that's what they're going to do. And our best course of action to prevent it is to be in a position to be able to, to defend ourselves, not to pretend that uh, creating any kinds of laws are going to dissuade the murderer from doing what he wants to do. He uh, got the guns legally in spite of background checks that were supposed to be stop gaps. Right. Uh, he wasn't he fell through the cracks in terms of being reported to the police because he was appropriately reported to the police so right. all of the fail safes that liberals believe will stop violence like this even ammunition he had 400 rounds of ammunition in his car uh, you know the there have there been mass murderers that have killed uh, as many people as he did and were armed with uh, AK-47s or or uh, other high capacity, uh, other high capacity rifles, and uh, only killed as many people as he did. You know, so right. the, the the type of gun, the, whatever, it doesn't matter. If it's deadly, it can kill people. It's pretty simple. The facts of this case are important, given the two groups of people that are trying to exploit it. Mm -hmm. um, which one is gun control people, like you talked about, because um, they try to exploit every. Uh, shooting every tragedy there's always mm -hmm. a gun control aspect uh like blumenthal a democratic uh democrat senator from massachusetts right he's from massachusetts mm. he said that it was proof what you have need... a dog now what yeah i have a dog i got a dog hey buddy my dog it's cute it's a cute dog he's gonna he's probably gonna kill you a lot though yeah it seems that way hey dog find ben go Go find him. Good boy. I don't, I, I don't think those said. verbal commands work at all. Yeah. Oh, you killed me once. And then your you dog got me once. Your and dog killed, dog me killed you. Time. Did that count as a postmortem kill for you? It did. The dog got you. Hey, dog. Good job. Good doggy. So the gun control people want to exploit it, like they do for every situation like this. And then also feminists radical feminists want uh, to exploit it as well. Yeah, uh, the, I, I, I don't even understand how they can... The, there's a protest right now. I saw this tweeted today, that there was a protest going on to protest the misogynist murders. And, I mean, that's what they call them, misogynist murders. You know, who are they protest... Like, who is it that they're standing up to that supports mentally ill people mass murdering? Uh, you know, like, usually when you're protesting... Men, apparently. Right. Usually when you're protesting, you're protesting against somebody who holds a position that's different than yours. I would assume we're all on the same page about this one. But they really want to make it about the words he used. And um, I said this to someone else. That that's like saying that, that Son of Sam murders uh, really mean we need to look into talking dogs more. You know, because that's what he was doing. He, he, he claimed that the dog made him do everything. Uh, right. Because crazy people say things about their motivations, but their motivations don't matter. They're crazy, and that's the point: is that their motivations don't matter. His just sounded close enough to um, what the feminists love to talk about that they latched onto it. I right. Mean, well, but I think that goes back to my point about this being the facts of this case mattering a lot because uh, gun control people want to use it, and so do radical feminists. Gun control people want to say that gun control would have stopped. You know, the Blumenthal said that the um, the background check bill that was debated a couple months back would have stopped the shooting, um, and then radical feminists said that the shooting was all about misogyny because you know he hated women and so forth. But the facts of the case are that this yeah. guy killed four men with a knife, ran three over men. another. I thought it was one. three men. Three men. Three men with a knife ran over another one, and then used a gun to kill two women. So, mm -hmm. yeah, he used. They a just car, want to ignore knife, that part of it. They, yeah, and and I think that it's important for people to know what what actually happened, and that that this isn't like some, it's not some sort of, uh, just like any shooting, it's not some sort of plug and play, you know, moral story, right. about gun control because, like you mentioned before. Everything that was in that, um, the background check uh, on private sales 
bill and and you know the assault weapons ban and and the magazine limitations all the stuff that liberals want gun control people want on the national scale they're already implemented in california which is where this guy um you know where where this shooting happened where he was able to get his guns there's two ways the liberals will approach this the gun control advocates would approach this they either say it's evidence that the laws aren't strict enough or they're going to say imagine how many more people he could have killed if blank like that, that that's usually their their modus operandi when it comes to gun laws having failed in a in a city or a state where gun control is already a uh, a part of the system right. but that's very convenient and very selective memory because in Chicago it doesn't work that way and their gun control laws are very strict there as are the gun control laws in Washington DC and neither of these places are known for being uh, immune to gun murder um, of course yeah and I just think that I think what's more likely is that uh, they'll do what they often do which is just ignore the facts yeah. Of what happened, and just say we need we need background checks on private sales. We need magazine limitations. We need say, you know, uh, assault from, weapons bans. Well, we have California has all that. Every single one of those things. From what did I not heard, prevent this guy from shooting two people. And even if he hadn't had any guns, I mean, he still killed several people with a knife. And it wasn't just about him hating women because he killed uh, three men, he killed more men than he killed women. So it's just. All of the, it, it, it the was stupid about, political yeah. narratives that have come out of the case are, are just ridiculous. They're just nonsense. They just have no, no basis in reality. He was a great A nut. Yeah, he just, he, uh, absolutely. Even more obnoxious than the, the radical feminist arguments or the, the gun control people, because you expect that pretty much any time. Well, this is the first. Like this it, watching them turn it into the misogynist attack. Uh, I mean, th that one's new on me. Them, them, them latching on to the. Uh, I, I guess yeah. I was a little. I, I didn't expect that. Yeah, I mean, to, to, yeah. Well, th that was, but because of what he had said and what he'd uh, written, you know, that's pretty clearly going to happen because he, he hated women, so he killed some. You know, he also hated lots of people, and he killed a bunch of men too. People who talk about teaching men not to rape and things like that uh and you know, right, right. Misogyny. That, that, they're gonna the, the key latch is not that. and every show i go on by the way uh there's a high usage of the word rape i just realized which just happened because i said it like eight times in a row and yeah. i i could hear myself saying it well, that's because thinking, you know i said rape a lot just then because you're uh you're taught that rape is good well that's yeah by society that's why so i'm a i'm a male and rape is is uh you know our thing yeah yeah every all men agree that rape is is appropriate and good so speaking of rape what about these xbox live fees right right <laughs> but uh, um now the one the one thing that came out of it that really bothered me i, I thought that that i really didn't expect at all was this sort of weird um idea that i guess it's part of the rape uh, they're, you know, teach men not to rape thing, but it's sort of the idea that because he was a, a lonely nerd, that that's why he. It's the bully meme, you it's, know. It's just like, oh, he was nerdy, and in the movies, especially for for some reason, they single out uh, Judd Apatow and like Seth Rogen movies. Uh, in the movies, the nerdy guy always gets the girl. And this guy was nerdy, but he didn't get so girls. So that's and incredible. So I haven't heard people. that yet. Are you serious? Is that what they're? Oh they're, yeah. So basically, the the old meme, which was that the dashing, heroic, good-looking guy always gets the girl, and then people complained that 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 was unrealistic, and most people don't look like that, and so on, resulted in the emerging meme of the last decade or so, where the you know, more average Joe type of guy, maybe maybe a little nerdy. He's getting the girl, and now that's a problem too. Yeah, pretty much. That's a um, basically it's sort of like because the guy in knocked up gets the pretty girl. So the problem is that the girls are pretty. So they need to start casting ugly girls. Yeah, I guess. The the argument is this is from the Washington Post, I believe, the style section. 
so you know it's good. Oh, um, yeah. But basically, like, in in movies like Knocked Up, uh, if the guy's j the the goofy nerdy guy is just persistent enough, and um, you know bugs the hot girl enough, uh, or does the right things, then he'll end up with with the hot girl. And so because that didn't happen for this guy, it 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 drove him crazy. I just and I just don't understand crazy. why they so think it's all Judd Apatow's fault and, and Seth Rogen. They've always got to find some reason for insanity. Or some reason for evil, well, so that you know, because they 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 have to deny to themselves that such absolute things exist. They can't accept that absolute evil exists. They can't accept that uh, absolute insanity exists, or that people make decisions that are from darker places than than their uh, moral equivalency allows. So they've always got to find some underlying reason for tragedy and, and things like that to happen. And it's an understandable human reaction. I will never forget after the um, the uh, shooting in the theaters, the Batman movie, um, I there was a, a kid who had died, and, uh, like a three-year-old or something. And I remembered thinking that I never would have brought my three-year-old, right? Yeah. And and I kept thinking that, and I, I was saying that, and somebody got on my case about it, and I was like, you know what, I'm just trying to feel like I like this wouldn't have happened to me. Like I'm trying to I'm trying to take away the randomness of what happened. Right. And 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 because if if it's random, if just randomly somebody can go insane, go into a theater and shoot everyone with absolutely no warning and no way for anybody to prepare against it, nothing society can do, then that means at any moment it can happen to me. Right, which is the actual truth of the matter. Right, and that's the truth of the matter, and that's what people have a hard time accepting. So I have empathy with, with the idea that what they want to believe is that if we can just make the right laws or make society change in just a certain way, and blah, 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 you know, that this will change and this won't happen. We won't have to worry about this anymore. And then they can also point at people who are preventing that change from happening and blame them. But the truth is, you, what you have to do is figure out how to best protect yourself in those situations, right. not how to figure out how to prevent evil or insane people from existing, because mm -hmm. they always will. Yeah, absolutely. I think it also um, just comes from uh, they already they already don't like this certain group, uh, gun owners, um, nerdy guys who think they're entitled to, you know, dates with women. And so they take that group and they, they take an action that isn't really their fault or related to them and they put it, they put it on them as a way of, uh, you know, going after someone they already don't like anyway. Right. Or as a way of self-shaming. Like there, there was a post on the, the Daily Beast from a, a self-described, like, nerdy guy who, tried, who like, tied um, this guy's murderous rampage to his own like lonely nerdiness like, no and, <laughs> yeah. you know his conclusion was don't relate to the guy for pete's sake it's just <laughs> absurd his conclusion was that this guy instead of you know uh trying to fulfill the role of like a seth rogan character what he really needed to do was grow up just like i and all my other nerdy friends do uh and it's no that guy growing up wasn't his problem. His problem was that he was insane, right. Um, right. and you're not like him, and neither am I. Just because I enjoy video games and and uh, it's, you know Seth Rogen movies, it's it's just nonsense. That's not reality. Joe Joe's here. Joe. Joe. Joe, are you, Joe, are you there? Come what? here. Come here. <clears throat> Come over. Walk over there. Yeah. Now, why don't you out. have a conversation with yourself? Joe, J Party Joe, as I call him. Ben will be Party Joe, and you'll be regular Joe. No, Joe, listen, what you're not understanding, Joe, is that, that's how that's how we're going to do it. Oh, I was okay. Okay, we're going to do that, okay. <laughs> <laughs> he basically said everything I could right there. That's exactly how that's I talk. That's like now do a combo book. between Lachlan and I. That's even better. This is Lachlan and Joe talking to each other about how awesome the movie they just saw together was. Hey, oh my God, man, did you see the part where he shot that guy's head off? That was the best part of the whole movie. Oh, I totally agree, man, this is insane. <laughs>
<laughs> so exactly true. I've seen that conversation actually happen in my life, and it's exactly like that. Hey, do you want to go get a drink after this? Yeah, man, that sounds holy. Okay, let's we'll, we'll do that. Okay, we'll, 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 <laughs> it's like they're sitting right there. It's like it's like I have Joe and Lachlan on the show right now. <laughs> so you actually own I a do. Wii U. Yes. You- and I believe it is a good system, and I think other people should buy it. I've been a long-time supporter of the um, separate d- display screen on the controller uh, because I think there's so many ways to implement that in the video games. There's a game like Splinter Cell, for instance, which is one of my favorite games. One of the things you usually have to do in that game is pick a lock. Well, with a touch screen, you could actually probably have a little more interesting puzzle elements involved on a separate screen, things like that. Um, so you party want game. a system where you put down your regular controller and pick up a no, tablet. No, 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 no. You, 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 that is your controller. I mean, you don't put anything down. It, that is your controller. I'll tell you another useful aspect of it, by the way, is... Um, if I'm playing a game on the Wii U and my wife wants to watch TV, mm-hmm. I can actually continue to play the game on the Wii using the tablet controller. Really? Uh, oh yeah. And that well, doesn't that mean that every game has to be sort of weak enough to play on a tablet then? No, you can be as good as you want on the Wii U and then do whatever necessary downgrading to have it work on the controller. I see. That's my daughter. Sounds terrible. No, yes, that, that's, I think that's an important point, uh, that you have children. I do. So well, and that's another aspect. Makes sense, of it. then. Yeah. Well, and look, there's also party elements to it. Like, for instance, uh, you can... We, we, my, my daughter and my, my daughters and my son, we play a game where um, I'm Mario running from all of them, and they're trying to find me in a maze. And so I can see all of them on the TV, and I can see where I'm running in the maze, but they can't see okay. me it's on this little screen. So that sounds cool. Yeah, it is. So you know what? It's better. Look, you, you've been saying that you're unhappy with the entire uh, uh, realm of uh, video games, and here's the Wii U over here innovating like crazy, and you're totally ignoring it. I don't think that motion game, gaming combined with uh, tablet motion gaming game. is really... No, no, motion gaming is kind of dead. I mean, that's not really a big aspect of it. Well, I hope that's good. That's good news, at least. Let me ask you this. One last question here. Yeah. Do you also own a virtual boy? <laughs> <laughs> you're no. just sitting there playing the Wii U and the virtual no. boy all I've day long, and you're like, to hell with you, society. Yeah. I've got a game. <laughs> I'm happy. I've got a Game Gear. As well. Game Gear was awesome. Right? It was. I am trash in the Game Gear. Or the Lynx. How about the Lynx? I have the Lynx. Or the Neo Geo. Neo Geo. Wow. That's before my time, but... All right, oh, well... Oh, Virtual Boy isn't? Uh, it is, but it's so bad that everyone still remembers how terrible it is. Even it's, the... like, it's like E.T. <laughs> yeah, it's like E.T. It should be buried in a pit in New, in New Mexico. So. You know, I actually played that game a lot. E.T. Really? Yeah. See? This is, you're just proving my point right here. Well, no. You, this your is the favorite thing, things uh, this, are E.T., this is the thing, uh, uh, about the being, Virtual Boy, and Wii U. Being poor and not entitled that people today don't get. Mm. I hated the game. <laughs> you just it, played it anyway. <laughs> it was just the only game we had. So <laughs> what was he going to do? If I wanted to play a game, I had to play the game where I'm stretching E.T.'s floating neck to get out of the pit. <laughs> you know? That, that was Those were my choices. Uh, fair enough. Yeah, that's that's my. I'm gonna leave the the show with that as my life lesson. Never be above stretching ET's neck to get out of a pit. <laughs> Those are words to live by. Yes, yes. Thank you for coming on, Ben. I appreciate the time, uh, and uh, I actually killed you a few times. So I want to did. That, it was weird. Want that noted. It was very fun to just play the two of us by ourselves in a giant map, running around 20 minutes trying to find each other. <laughs> Talking about the Wii U. <laughs> this right. will be the most viewed episode ever. That's right. I can protect it right now. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Ben. Yep. Talk uh, later. See everybody next time. Peace out. <laughs>